Desa goes off. That's all for Desa. Here's Stonky. We'll take a look. Abramson stuffed by Porter. A huge stop. Abramson surging in. He tips it home. Williams now puts it away. Two goal game. 13 to 11 with 58 seconds left. And the men of Troy will count it down. 20 years after their first NCAA title, they are champions again. USC wins the 2018 NCAA Men's Water Polo Championship. And they're into the water here at Avery. You know, the season as a whole probably started the year before. And then from that championship game, 2018, moving forward, it was all about how can we get better? Um, what did we learn from that game moving forward? We saw some flaws in our game that needed to be improved, and the guys worked hard to improve it. The journey of the season was a, definitely not a straight path. Going into rank number one, there's definitely a lot of pressure, especially after losing the past year. It's, it's, our team was like, it's kind of national championship or bust. I think it was definitely a special season for, for myself and for the team. Coming off a loss in the national championship, you obviously want to come out and make a statement. We ended up going on a good like run of, of wins, playing well. Our offense was really, really like carrying our team. Despite the fact that we were winning a lot of games by like substantial margins, no one ever really was satisfied. The MPSF invite, which was the early season tournament down at UCLA, that was huge for our development as well. I, I don't think Stanford had won that in quite some time. Um, and for some reason, the team that wins that tournament in, in the past has also won NCAAs. As being number one comes with some certain responsibilities, and we wanted that. We wanted that pressure. We wanted to learn from that. Everything up until that point had made us confident. Even though um, you know, we struggled a little bit against USC, you know, no one would have it any other way. I mean, you always want to be tested. Going into the national championship tournament, we, we were confident. We were confident in our capabilities. We were confident in like, we, our scouting of the other teams. You know, to play against SC in a semifinal you know, the year after they beat us at our home pool, I mean, that was just special. One thing people probably don't know is that Tyler Abramson had been sick all week. And so he actually missed, I believe, four days of practice leading up to that. So it's a real credit to him to be able to do what he did in those first three quarters. He played really well, but when you go back and watch the game, he ran out of gas. And of course he did. He was going on pure adrenaline and they made their run and they did a great job. But you know, as I'd mentioned before, we had trained for these moments. We were ready for it. We weren't going to flinch. It was next man up. Abramson scores another on the power play. John Vargas likes what he sees. They were prepared, mentally, physically prepared and confident. And so when, when USC made the run, of course, they did their really good team. They've been in that position a lot more than we have. They've had that experience. So no surprise that they would make a run. But we had gone through that last year. We were ready, we were prepared for, for the moment. And USC gets an important goal back from Merchep.
soaking wet and it's, it's dark out and it's we're in Stockton and it came down to the wire and, and our team was just saying like we got this you know this is our year and we're not we're not going home with anything less than a win. Merchep bringing him back. Jacob Merchep has another he has a hat trick coming back even strength now. Woodhead Quinn Woodhead a night to remember buries another Merchep has another. They're working around the perimeter. Timer to nine. Still looking. They go to Merchep. A second exclusion to five. Merchep to three. They got to go. Tie game. Oh, boy. Luke Wyatt delivers in the clutch. We're headed to overtime. What a rally from USC. Closing out a game on that stage was like, that's that's defines a great team. You know, if if you everyone's everyone's happy and like can play well when you're ahead, but when you go down, that like kind of that kind of shows your true character. You know, Quinn had a great game. You know, and and he he really stepped up um, and embraced that that moment. His shot in the second overtime to tie it um, was big. Second look. The leg strength here. If you look at Quinn's career as a player, I'm going back to age group in high school, he's always done well in these type of position, situations. But he hadn't been in that position really in college yet, in college, his college career. So that was great, and him um, stepping up in that, in that pressure moment to get us into that, you know, the, uh, the sudden death game, uh, part of the game. Now that third overtime or you know sudden death, we knew we were going to run a certain play. We've practiced that play probably from midseason going forward. But this particular play was the play that the guys had the most confidence in. But my question to them was, do you want to run it off of a sprint or do you want to run it off of a timeout? And they said, well, much better if we run it after a timeout. Great. So um, Bennett, we need to win that sprint again, and I'll call immediate timeout, and we'll run the play off the timeout. Parker Killian goes to Quinn's position, and the expectation is um, you know, execute, uh, and, and Quinn did. Out of the timeout, next goal wins. Cardinal off the timeout, ready to go. Here's Woodhead. Inside, right in front, that's game! Because that was a great readout um, by Quinn. It first starts with the, the long cross-court pass from Bennett to Quinn. That's a difficult pass. It's about a 15-meter pass that has to be on hand with pressure. Um, so Bennett nails that pass and Quinn made an unbelievable read to Ben and then you know Ben does what Ben does you know and with you know three guys all over him isolated and he finishes like you know no one else in the country could. When your best player is your best leader, you can do special things. And, and, and Ben is definitely our best player, the, the top player in the country, but he also has great qualities, on leadership qualities. He's not a yeller and a screamer. He definitely is there to make his teammates better, and he understands that he's gonna serve them first, and by doing that, his game will actually even thrive even more. I can't say enough good things about Ben. Uh, he is truly, you know, everything you'd want in a leader, is in Ben. And, you know, besides how amazing and waterproof he is, he, he really was the heart and soul of the team. We exercised some demons uh, by beating SC. You know, SC, I think, had um, beaten us maybe five times in a row, either in a semifinal or final of NC2As. And so they just needed to get over that hump. And then, of course, we played UOP the next day. You know, a little, a little worried that we had spent a little bit too much emotional energy the night before, but you know, we had trained so hard all season long and had a lot of mental rehearsals leading up to that tournament. There was definitely a lot of, a lot of pressure. It wasn't always easy on our team because 
we, we felt like we were the best team and we felt like anything less than a dominant win was, was kind of really bad for us. The atmosphere in Stockton was kind of peak water polo in the US. That's like, that's what you dream about when you're, when you're playing as a kid. You see your family and friends, it's close by, so you got a lot of support there as well. I think that's, that's all you can ask for in our sport. Winning a national championship, there's always a lot, of, a lot of joy and happiness, but I think for our team, the most prevalent emotion was just relief. Because we've been so, so close every year. You know, there have been so many teams that you look back on, and you're like, how did, how did they not win a national championship? And then it's, it's such an honor to, to be a part of the team that finally you know, broke through that glass ceiling and, and finally, finally brought one home. But I do owe a lot of credit to, to you know, the guys that started the culture because you know, the team that we have right now is, is such a close-knit group of guys. In our world of water polo, when we play at this level, we look, we look to do things for the first time, you know, be, do something different. That's thanks to, thanks to our coaches. They had a, a huge impact on this team, um, whether it be with the scouting reports or just you know, motivating us as individuals. I'm not exactly sure how to articulate you know, what it really means because it's so special. I mean, it is a lifetime's worth of work for all of us, and it's something that you know, the Stanford Water Bowl has not been able to achieve in so long, and, you know, and we were able to do it. And I think the most special thing is that every teammate in, uh, that I've had through this program has to know that you know, this is not just us, it's them because they instilled the culture, they taught us, and to win one means, you know, it's almost like giving thanks to them. Three, two, one, the long wait is over. One of college water polo's premier programs is back on top again. Stanford, your men's water polo champs in 2019. And this is a jump in the pool that John Boggers has been working on since 2002, the last time the Stanford Cardinal won the Men's College Water Polo Championship. A lot of close calls, and they get the job done in 2019, defeating Pacific 13 to eight. The top seed coming into this tournament, the MPSF champions, they had a battle with USC. A game they thought was won, ahead by three, with two minutes to go, they are forced into overtime. And then one of their stars, they have many, Ben Halleck wins it in golden goal overtime. That pushes them into this final. And after the first quarter, they left no doubt. It was a 5-3 match with 39 seconds left. And then Stanford took control. They ran off five unanswered. And then they had all the answers. It's um, more important for the program at large than it is for any you know, one team, I think. You know, core group comes back. We'll see if this is a special group. Well, I think it is.